Hello everyone and welcome back to another book review. Today I am going to be reviewing a book that is a little outside my comfort zone and to be honest I don't really know why I checked it out of the library and that is Cold Case Michigan. So true crime is interesting but I am very very sensitive so true crime is way too spooky for me. So why I picked out a true crime book and why I picked out not only a true crime book but even worse unsolved true crime hence Cold Case book from the library I will never know. I don't know what inspired me to think this was a good book for me to read, but I decided to check it out because I was feeling brave when it was sunny and four in the afternoon and I was in the library with a lot of other people, as opposed to when I had to read this at night in a house by myself. Okay, maybe I shouldn't have done that. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the geography of the United States, Michigan is a state in the United States. It's close near the Canadian border. And these are just a collection of cold cases, so unsolved crimes that have occurred in Michigan. Most of these crimes occur in between like the between like the 20s to the 40s, and there was a couple that were in the 70s that they talked about. And one big thing that I noticed in this book is that a lot of these crimes would have been able to have been solved had we had modern techniques in like the 20s, 30s, 40s. For example, a big thing is DNA, like being able to figure out whose DNA maybe matches something that was left at the crime scene, doesn't mean they did it, just might be able to put them there, or having um, cameras, for example, like cameras in places that will enable us to see what's going on. These are things that they didn't have or didn't have as much of. I, they definitely didn't have DNA stuff. I don't know how when cameras came in, but they didn't have as much of that in like 20s, 30s, and 40s, so they had to rely on a lot of other different techniques to solve it, like um, just eyewitnesses, uh, witness testimonies and statements, interviewing people. They talked about giving people truth serum, which was some drug that they injected into you to see if, because they thought it would help you tell the truth, um, what are they called, polygraphs or lie detecting tests they made people do, and then just physical evidence. That was kind of all they had to go off of to try to solve these, and I think that maybe nowadays some of these wouldn't have been cold cases because we would have had a lot more evidence to go on. So there's, I don't know, maybe about 10 cases in here uh, that take place, like I said, mostly from like the 20s to the 40s, 1920s to 1940s, but there is one that takes place in the 70s, and each case has its own chapter and they discuss what happened, how the crime was discovered, the main suspects, how the police studied it, kind of where the case ended up and how it grew cold and if there has been any development since then. Um, so some of the ones that they went through that would have been much easier to solve today, there was a couple in particular. One was about a radio personality in Detroit. So his whole thing was calling out people on radio. So he would call, this was during Prohibition era, and he would call out uh, corrupt government officials or big people who were in, um, I don't know if mob or gang, organized crime of some sort, he would call them out on the radio. And there is some debate about whether or not he was kind of, I don't know if there's a debate, I'm not a crime scene or a crime expert, but it was kind of implied that he might have been wanting money to kind of change his stance on the radio. So maybe it was kind of an extortion scheme, but he was also just calling people out, people who had money and means. And one night he was uh, tricked into going down to the lobby. He thought his sister had called and he was gonna meet her. So he went down to the lobby and three people came in and shot him and then left. And from our perspective, I feel like, well, we would just pull the camera footage, what, who, who shot it. Um, and of course, m suspicious things could happen, like if the police were involved, like there was some question about whether there was actual legal authorities involved, they could probably get the, the camera footage erased or disappeared somewhere. But I feel like that's the kind of thing that would be a little easier because when they were trying to solve this case, they were relying on eyewitnesses, people who had seen it, and they were asked to like identify, was this the person you saw in the lobby? Um, and there weren't a lot of good close, uh, witnesses it sounded like to really figure out who had done it and therefore people walked who they thought maybe had done it and it was kind of hard to determine. Well today I feel like that would be a crime that would be much more solvable. The very last cold case that we discuss in this book is actually a case that was solved using modern techniques. So that was the one that took place in the 1970s and it was a cold case when it happened. Um, there was a number of young women who were found uh, dead around uh, Michigan State University which is in uh, Lansing or yeah, Lansing, I think it said. And so they were they were dead bodies and 
it was kind of implied when you went through the cold case that maybe these were related, but actually years later when DNA evidence became more available, they could, I guess, like they had taken samples from the bodies of these women and they were able to kind of compare it with other things and they were able to identify two of the perpetrators. I believe both of them were dead after it happened, so there wasn't really any uh, criminal justice system they could put the people through, but it kind of closed those cases. So it kind of shows how maybe if they had those techniques in like the 20s, 30s, and 40s, it, these cold cases might not have been as cold. Um, this is, so this for me, I rated it as three star and that was just the spook factor. I, again, I don't know why I picked this out. This is the kind of thing where a very good book could rate, be rated a little lower by a reader who it isn't what they wanted. I don't know what I was doing picking this book out of the library. Um, from a very objective standpoint, it's very, very interesting. I thought it was very well organized, very well done, incredibly interesting. A lot of history and stuff that I didn't know about. For example, there was some uh, state senator or something who was assassinated in his car on the highway. And apparently you can go see the hat he was wearing that had bullet holes in it um, from his assassination. So that would have been, that sounds just very interesting. The fact that we still have this relic or whatever. Uh, the state of Michigan has this relic, at least. I personally do not have this relic. Um... But it was me and I don't like true, I, true crime is interesting, but it's very, very scary for me. So I was scared when I read this and I had to break it up into little chunks and read it over a wide span of time so I could kind of digest it as it happened. And then I got really, really spooked. Um, for example, this little cat here was coming around the corner the day after I finished it and all I saw was his shadow coming in advance and I freaked out and I was like, okay, we got to we got to stop the true crime thing for a little bit because it's been a little too spooky for me and I can't quite handle it. So I really, really do think this would be a very interesting book if you enjoy true crime. So I don't want anyone to be put off by my rating of it. That was just my personal interaction with the book and all ratings are subjective. So if you like true crime, if you'd like to read about some cold cases, particularly maybe less well-known cold cases, um, I think it'd be really interesting to read this book. There's a lot of interesting stuff in here. I bet you could get one of these for all sorts of places in the United States. I bet you could also get one of these for different countries around the world. I have to imagine they put out stuff like this. So I think it's very, very interesting and well done. It just maybe wasn't the right book for me. And that's on me for getting it out of the library. But I did want to take a chance to highlight this because the author who is this um, Tobin T. Book, really took some time to put this book together and I think it's really interesting and I want to highlight the, the interesting work that he did and give a chance for anyone out there who does like true crime and maybe isn't as scared as I am to give it a read and see what you think about it. So that's my review of Cold Case Michigan, again by Tobin T. Book. Uh, if you if this sounded interesting to you, I would highly recommend giving this a read and supporting this really interesting work that the author has put together. Other than that, everyone, I hope you have a really great day.